um, hello and welcome to another episode of uh, CP Cyberpunk 2049 um, Solid State Society. Tonight with us we have Doc who's playing Neuro, um, Ghost who's playing Trauma, and Matihi who's playing Yin. Um, at the end of the last episode, um, Yang, Yin and Yang made a proposition to the group um, working towards Yang's objectives. Um, whatever they are, he didn't he didn't go into too many details. And um, also, Yin would would like to get some stuff done. A software copy that she had acquired, um, where the software can crack through any any sort of uh, encryption. Um, she wanted to make copies of that software and sell it throughout Icarus One. Um, and she had come up with a plan and a division of the profits made from the sale with each member in the group getting a certain percentage. Um, that particular night, trauma was, uh, was unreachable, though he got a message from Yang. Um, Yin and Yang never heard from him. Um, the rest of the group agreed to the proposition and the terms. Um, some had their own reasons, um, and some just wanted to get back into the middle of the action. Um, at the end of the session, um, Yang is seen walking at the base of uh, Takeda Tower, uh, putting his plans in motion. Um, Yin is back at a den, figuring out how to make further copies and trying to figure out who put the knuckle draggers on her tail. Um, that led to that fateful night of mayhem and her almost losing gainful employment with Mr. Sachs. Tonight's session we start with trauma. Um, so as the the eye over Icarus 1 starts zooming, panning, searching for the members of our group, it eventually finds trauma and it starts zooming in on Icarus General, where we know trauma has a certain someone that he's taking care of. And with that, we move to the, it's not an ICU, but it's uh, where patients are kept under close observation. And uh, we see trauma by a bedside and on the bed, a little girl who whose eyes are closed and she's very still. The heart rate is reading steady. Um, we switch over you, to you, Trauma. So Trauma will be sitting in this room as he has uh, many nights before. He says this is after, uh, this is a couple days after the whole fiasco that I was involved in with the others. So in your case, it's about a week, a little more over the week. So he wouldn't have, he would have come in here and he really wouldn't have changed doing his typical day job of trauma teamwork and come in dirty, maybe a bit of blood on a, one of his patches in his uniform. He just kind of leaned back, sitting, spending time with his girl, he reads through messages and sees something about Yang, that kid messaged him. Just kind of ignores it. He kicks back and starts looking through his credits. He sees that he's not got a great deal. Just maybe enough to get him through this week again, just like always. He just kind of leans back and lets out a deep sighs at the circumstances that he's in. with Ghost sitting there pensive looking at his credits wondering how he's going to make ends meet and take care of his little girl 
the eye or it is one detects motion among one more of the group and it starts zooming out of it is general and going to a familiar drug den where we know yin you can find yin when she's not working and yin sits up off her makeshift bed and starts getting ready for the evening she's so used to it's not many times that she really sees the light of day and she mostly operates at night it's probably been well, a couple weeks since she's actually been out in the sunlight but she prefers sleeping during the day anyway and as she gets dressed she pulls out her calm pad scrolls to the bottom of her contact list to a very familiar name and she's not sure if he's busy working right now but she decides to call up Zamir as she shrugs on her clothing the call rings and within a couple of rings the line is picked up hello hi zamir it's yin ah yin how you been i've been very well that's actually, good to hear yes i actually uh, am planning to come and see you this evening there is a a few questions that i'd like to ask hmm a few questions you say yeah. yeah come on over i'm at the shop you know where to find me perfect now see you in the next hour give or take with traffic okay okay i shall wait for you in i'm so happy again we can meet, get to meet each other as am i look forward to seeing you until later yin And with that, Ian hangs up the compad and finishes getting ready. She puts on kind of a large coat and underneath, she decides not to bring her larger mono blade this time, just opting for the small one, just in case, and kind of hides it within the coat. And with that, she steps out of her den. into the night and heads towards little wing in leaves her apartment makes her way towards the various conveyances with the nicrus one it's early evening is still rush hour a lot of folks returning from their day jobs a lot of sararimen returning from their indentured employment with the various mega corps yin sits quietly by herself on the subway not drawing at any any attention eventually the stop is little wing she gets off walks to the market the familiar bazaar takes a turn down the alley where is a new shop is then And she finally picks his amuse place. And before I'm turning the corner to go with Zamir's eyeline, she takes a deep breath and her rebreather and <sighs> she puts the mask back in her coat. Puts on a bit of a smile before kind of stepping into Zamir's eyeline, big smile, just now plastered on his face, seeing the older gentleman. And Zamir, he's he's busy um, working on this workbench, and then something catches his eye at the corner of his eye. He looks up and he sees Yin. Ah, Yin! So glad you could make it. Have you have you had any food this evening? Ah. <sighs> Samir, I uh, no, I I recently woke up. <laughs> ha, 
Well, you young whippersnappers, come with me, come with me. Let's get some food in you. And with that, he kind of steps out of his shop. Hmm. Hmm. Come over, let's get some dumplings and some soup. Of course. It's so nice to see you again. In such a short time. It is. If you make this a habit, then it keeps me happy. <laughs> I know that you're doing well in Icarus 1. Oh, I yes. worry about you, Yin. There's no need to worry. Things are looking up now, Samir. They are? Yes. Yin will take a seat beside Samir in the little um, booth there. Yes, uh, I may have uh, found some additional employment. That is excellent, Yin. That is such good news. Is the employment good? Are your employers good people? Yes, they are. Extremely mm. kind. I, I am excited for this business opportunity they have offered me. And Yin's kind of got this... Definitely like a very genuine smile on her face. Good, good. That is always good to hear, Yin. It's places like Icarus One. It's not, it's not the, not the right place to sit idle. The wrong thoughts enter one's mind, and the wrong deeds lead out from them. It would be very unfortunate and very saddening if something unfortunate were to happen to you. No, I'm good. I'm glad you found gainful employment. Well, well, and then he kind of, uh, you know, raises his hand, and from the back, this older lady brings out like a bowl of like dumpling soup, and then some, um, you know, fried dumplings as well, and then some assortment of uh, meat that's like on a stick. Well, don't just look at me. Dig in, and then you can see he's also not had food for some time so he's kind of chowing down and before Yin starts taking a bite she looks over to Zamir and have you ever heard of a place called the Untitled hmm. yes I have it's actually hmm. it's a funny name you know the Untitled <laughs> And it's it's uh, it's it's kind of goes back to the early days of computing when you'd create a file and it would remain it would have the name untitled on it. <laughs> the bar owner Gabe, yeah, his name is Gabe. He has a how do you say a, a very quaint sense of humor. Yes, I know the untitled. It's an interesting place, Ian. I might tell you. Mm. Not everyone who's there are the right sort of people, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I think I do, and Ian starts to kind of eat her food fairly slowly. Oh. Well, there's this tech that I have recently gotten my hands on, and not sure if you have any inside information or anything, but I am looking for a few buyers to inquire with. Hmm. What sort of tech is this, Ian? What kind of buyers are you looking for? And you know, look around, seeing if anybody else is really listening on the conversation. Look back to Samir and kind of lean in slightly well it's basically a program that can pretty much break into almost any system and at that point Zamir's like face is kind of down. He's you know eating a dumpling and drinking some soup, and he puts his spoon down. 
He turns around to you. You have a code cracker, Ian? Yes, I do. And his face kind of becomes a little grave. Do other people know you have this software? A very select few number of people know I have it, yes. People you can trust your life with? Yes. I am very sure on that. Well, the Untitled would be the place for such transactions. And he kind of takes a moment. You can see the grave look has now kind of gone into a full worry on his face. It's, it's a difficult question you ask him. I know this software will bring you a lot of credits and help you settle in a case one. But at the same time, I'm worried about the people you'll meet and the people that will find out and kind of try and come after you. Code crackers are are rare, complex. Mm-hmm. Knowledge of one, l- let alone having one, brings a lot of heat, both the good kind and the bad kind. I understand, but it is something that I need to do and something that I need to help get off my hands okay so this is what you can do I know Gabe Gabe is a good person you can talk to him he's always at the bar of the untitled he runs the place You can ask him that there are folks he knows who are interested in it. I can go through some of my contacts and try and find some buyers. One or two of them, I would rather not deal with them because they're bad people. I've been forced to deal with them in the past, but I've done my best to cut all ties with them. If you want, I can reach out and make introductions. Do you want me to do that, Ian? If possible, and as long as you're comfortable with it, Samir, I do not want to put you out. Uh, no, I want to help you. But remember this, Ian. When you make these transactions, the people you make them with, they are going to expect something that works. Now, I'm not saying you're trying to sell a bad bill of goods, but I'm just saying that if it doesn't work, they will stop at nothing to hurt you and the ones you love, the ones you know, the ones you have met. This goes, this is not surface level hustle anymore, Ian. These transactions are going to get you deeper into the Icarus underground. And once you go in, there is no way out. I understand. And normally, risking my self like this is not what I do but with recent events with recent opportunities given to me this is really 
the only way that I am going to be finally able to accomplish some lifelong goals of mine. And in this case, I will stop at nothing, no matter what it takes to see them through. But I will be very careful. My contacts that I have, they know this works and they've tested it. I will make sure to only sell them the best product because I do not want any of this coming back at you, Zamir. You're the last person that I won't hurt by any of this. Alright, Ian. I know you have a good set of contacts and you are careful. I've seen that before. I will see what I can do find you some buyers. In the meantime, um, if you speak to Gabe at The Untitled, he should be able to put you on to someone who would like to buy such a software. Well, anyway, enough of this down in the doldrum stuff. Finish up your soup. Tell me what else is happening. And then, you know, he kind of starts going into like chit chat and gossip around Little Wing and you know like just small talk mm. Ian will eat and respond in very similar small talk kind of alluding to some of the new people she's met not really describing some of the actions in the past week or before that that she's taken but making it seem more light than it is Eventually, you guys finish early dinner. Zamir insists on paying, you know, over your protests. Mm -hmm. And he has this kind of, you know, like a, uh, you know, this caring, um, almost, a, you know, very affectionate smile about him. It's like, Ian? Yes, Zamir. Um, Whatever you get yourself into, know this. There is always a way out if you plan accordingly. When I said there is no way out when you get into the underworld, that is most of the time. But if you strategize and plan well, have backups, counter plans, if you get into the you can always get out. And for a moment, you're not sure what. But there is a... It's almost like a... Uh, an expression that kind of flows across Amir's face. As he's... You can see like his eyes kind of... Uh, do not focus on your face, but... He's kind of looking in the distance and... and kind of refocuses back on your face. Yes. For the select few who know what they're doing, there's always a way out. And then he kind of reaches out and holds your hand. And yin, there's always a way out. And if you find yourself stuck, cornered, despite all your plans, I hope you remember me. And I will do all I can to help. And Ian just looks at Samir and her eyes get a little bit kind of uh, glassy almost and kind of blinks rapidly before letting go of Samir's hand and wrapping her arms around him and giving him a hug. I will. Thank you, Samir, for everything that you've done for me. Ah? It's no bother. None at all. Now you run along now. 
you must have a busy evening and i will get back to you once i have something mm, you can pulls back and let's go yes unfortunately always busy <laughs> <laughs> thank you samir i will await your call and with that Ian gets up and bids samir farewell before walking back down the alley and heading back to her place to pick up the technology to deliver to Nero. All right. So now as you leave uh, Zamir's shop and Little Wing and make your way back into Chris One, the camera starts zooming out over over Chris and starts kind of feel like this red dot that's moving along Icarus 1. You eventually get to your den, you pick up the software. Do you pick up your monoblade as well this time? Mm. No, she decides to keep it at home. She's not too sure exactly what the Untitled is going to hold, but she's assuming that a very obvious blade is probably not going to get her inside. Okay. Cool. And with that, you're back out into the cool, um, slightly humid, um, windless night of Icarus 1. What would you like to do next? Yin pulls out her phone, her compad, scrolls down to the MN section, finds Niyoshima's name, and presses down and puts the combat up to your ear hearing it ring the compad rings neuro on your end you see your compad light up and there it says you know, on the compad yin is trying to reach you so i see the glow of the compad light up in my dark room i pick it up and i look at it and it says yin on there Kind of take a deep breath. Kind of knew this call was coming. I just I'm not sure how to respond yet, knowing what I know about the technology, about the software, the data cracking code. But take a deep breath. I'm gonna hit accept. Yen. Mm, yeah. How are you this evening? I was thinking about going to bed early tonight, but that doesn't sound like I'm going to be able to. <laughs> it's always an option, but I had something more fun in mind for tonight. I'm on my way over. I have something for you. I'll be waiting with bated breath. <laughs> Don't hold it too long. None of that shall hang up. And quickly start heading over to Nero's. Nero walks into the restroom and he looks at himself in the mirror. Kind of opens his mouth and looks at his teeth to make sure there's nothing in his teeth. He breathes into his hand and smells it. Kind of shrugs his shoulders. Eh. He turns around, walks back out and takes a drink of the whiskey that's on his table there's always a bottle of whiskey on his table he takes a shot of that sets it down kind of puts his boots on laces them up while he's sitting down stands up and kind of stretches his arms into his coat stretches his neck from side to side kind of rolls it just a little bit and uh, wakes his computer up, wakes his, his rig up there, and gets everything ready. He has a, a pretty good idea of what she's headed over for, so he starts preparing his, his gear. Um, so Yin starts heading over to, um, to Nero's place. Uh, give me a moment while 
and yin you know that nero lives somewhere in the stacks um but you're not sure where and it takes you some time as you get closer to the stacks things are getting a little crazy and hairy um um the, the, the area is getting rougher it's definitely not a nice place to be um i want you to give me a a notice wisdom plus notice roll Okay. Um so you start observing that there are like kind of groups of people um just kind of roving about the streets. Um you notice that they have a tendency to kind of get very close to people and then your eyes just about catch uh you know uh like a quick blurry motion of the hand. Um and you know you know that there these people are pickpockets you make sure you kind of start skirting around them uh making sure that you do not go anywhere close to them eventually you get into the middle of the stacks let me bring up the image for you uh over now in the stacks and you're trying to find about where you would find neuro how do you go about that hmm. so yin thinks oh that's right I thought he sent me his information, but he didn't. He was kind of cursing to himself internally, not really liking this type of area, especially what she with what she has on her. It's not her scene. Maybe a few years ago, yes, but now she's grown, become more skilled. Just need to rely on things like pickpocketing anymore. So to make things easier, she takes out her compad again and redials Nero. Yeah, and when my compad glows again, I pick it up and look and see that it's her. Uh, Nero just kind of rolls his eyes. <laughs> He whispers to himself. she's lost. He answers, "Yes, Yin." "I am you. Mm, I just want to comment that you kind of live in a very shit hole neighborhood. Other thing. Where do you live?" "Yeah, well, I'd be glad you don't have to live here." Hmm. "I always have room if you right need it." "Here." And he pings his location into her compad so that she knows exactly where to go and then as soon as he pings it uh, and sends her the data uh, he just says i'll see you in a few and he hangs up she puts her compad back into her pocket shakes her head oh yin starts making her way to the pinged point all right So you and you start making your way towards um, the location that Nero pinged. Uh, it takes you about maybe five minutes, um, um, and then again you get lost for a bit. It's just this place is is nothing that you have experienced. Um, give me a a mental save. Oh. Uh, 
all right so given your upbringing and you know um i mean you've been on the streets but there's a difference between the streets of ikers one and the streets of the of the stacks um this place is like the cd underbelly of of a fat whale and the whale being ikers one it takes some time you start walking you're able to find the location but some of the images are disturbing but you power through them um eventually you get to the to the building that uh, neuro is living in there is no buzzer there is no door man there is just a door that opens and you start climbing the flight of stairs after about eight flights you're in front of a door you knock and you find yourself in neuro's abode with that knock nero opens the door and sees yin standing there he just kind of gives her the briefest you know kind of glance up and down and without saying anything he moves out of the doorway and holds his arm out as if like uh, you may enter yin carefully steps in her eyes tracing all around the room it's taking in both the size and the mess of technology and all the screens that he's got. And she kind of steps into the center of the room, spins around looking, and looks back to Nero at the door. Lovely place you have here, Nero. And as she says, lovely place you have, Nero, he already has his head out the door and looking up and down the hall as she walked in. And just says, yeah, yeah, as he's checking to make sure there's no one behind her. And then he turns around and walks back in, shuts the door. And as he shuts the door, he reaches over and hits a hits a, a pad on the wall. And it goes from green to red. And you hear a click on the wall there. And then he looks at her again. So, what is it you need now? Did you... Did you bring the code cracker? Mm. Going straight through that, I see. <sighs> yes, Nero, I brought the code cracker for you. I was unsure walking here, being in this area, if it would even be really safe in your hands. But I see you have some sort of security measures. Well, have you seen where I live? Yes. Of course I have some security measures in place. Good. Now, I won't have too much time to play with this box, but you can play with it later as we have a little meeting to get to with a certain man who saved your life at least that's the plan a, a meeting a man who saved my life what are you talking about the one who stopped you from dying back when they came and saved you. you you're gonna have to be a little more specific <sighs> you know, finds a space um, maybe a table or something puts down the code cracker Walks back up to Nero. Ah, D. Do you remember when you were captured by the Knuckle Draggers, Nero? You, you mean the, the the medic? Yes. Trauma. Trauma. That was his name. Yes. Uh, we're gonna go meeting him tonight. Yes, and. I was thinking the three of us could also go to the Untitled. The Untitled. And with that, when she says that, you could see an obvious change in, in Nero's expression from one of uh, almost excitement at getting to think trauma to immediate disappointment of hearing the name The Untitled. He just kind of frowns and looks at her and 
what business do you have at the Untitled? <laughs> we are all... <laughs> we need to find someone to sell this to. That is why we're going to the Untitled. And we're also going to find out who sent the knuckle draggers on this. There's, there's, there's no proof that the knuckle draggers were sent to get us. They were sent to get the code cracker. They, I don't think it even matters who was there. They weren't yeah. after us. Doesn't matter if they were not after us. Well, they were after you, obviously. But they missed with a job of mine. I want them dead for that. bringing way too many emotions into this. Yes. Oh god, this is a bad idea. I am not saying we kill them tonight. I'm saying we find out who they are. <sighs> yeah, well. I guess none of this changes the fact that I still want to meet Trauma. <laughs> I owe him. I'll go with you right now. I also want to get my hands on the code cracker. I want to try it out a little more. See how long it's going to take to make copies. Like I said, we're going to need a lot of computing power to do that. Mm. My brother is working on that. But for now, let us meet Trauma. Hopefully convince him to work with us yes convince him to work with us He's... I just want to say thanks I don't want to draw him into more trouble <laughs> we need him he saved your life we're going to need him in the future he did and I owe him I'm going to owe him I'm going to do him I'm going to do him the favor of being honest and saying get away from us Nero and Yin picks back up the code breaker. Look, we want Nero, or we want Trauma on site. We want him in the employment of my brother. That is very obvious. Now, I need you to cooperate with this, and I don't want you to sabotage this meeting. Alright. God damn it, lady. You just bring people into your orbit, and they just crash like comets, burning up. Oh. This isn't going to end well for anyone. It's not going to end well for trauma. I really don't think it's going to end well for me, my friend Val. No one. You think I'm doing really this crashed? for my own reasons, not because I want to help you, not because I want to help your brother. There are things I need to take care of, but I don't want to drag people down with me. Just remember, that's where we're different. I'm gonna work with you. And if you wanna drag other people into your orbit, that's fine. I'll do the job. But I'm not gonna be happy about it. <laughs> well, at least the money will be good for you. Even if you're full of morals. But I respect that. Well, anyways, I need a goddamn drink. And I need to shake this man's hand, so. God, I can't believe I'm going back into that club. Let's fucking go. And before they go, Yen picks up the phone, kind of goes through contacts again. I'm not sure if she got Trauma's number the last time. I'm assuming probably from Yang. Yeah, you definitely have Trauma's number um, through Yang and all that happened the last time. And she'll press down on his contact name and put the compad up to her ear. Well, it rings. Trauma on your end, um, as you're in, still by your daughter's bedside, you see your compad vibrate. When you pull it out, you see 
the word Zien on it. Great. <laughs> my foot up to my ear. And... Yeah. Hi, Trauma. How are you this evening? I was doing better a couple minutes ago. What do you want? <laughs> oh, I'm offended. But I have a proposition for you. A new job that pays up front this time. Interested? I might be. Can you meet me at Cafe Solis? I think it's in Little Wing. How much time? Mm, uh, how long would it take us to get there? Mm, I, mean, I mean, maybe about half an hour tops for everyone to get there. Mm, meet in 40 minutes. Can you do that? I'll be there. But don't waste my time. I won't. And then he hangs up and looks to me out. Well, looks like he's coming. Get your hands ready, I guess. Well, very good then. Let's go ahead and get out of here. As long as we don't leave too late from here, it shouldn't be too rowdy out there on the streets. Mm -hmm. Getting through the stacks is much easier earlier in the evening. Do you, you don't want to be coming through here at 2 in the morning. Do you have any way uh, secure to put this for now? And she hold up the code breaker. I trust you enough to leave it with you. And Hiroshima looks at her, then he he uh, looks... Or are you holding it? Or are yeah. you just patting your pocket? No, yeah. she's holding he looks it. At, she, he looks at the data file and... You know, in her in her hand, and he looks around the room. Well, I've lived here basically my whole life, and no one's gotten in here. So I guess uh, this is as good a place as any. It's secure. It's locked down. Mm, better be. And she'll walk over to his desk. And put it down, maybe if there's any papers or anything, I'll just put it on top or put those over top of it. Look like off to Nero. Ready? Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. And with that, me and I'll make your exit from Nirashima's apartment. Start heading towards Cafe Solis. With that, Nero and Yin leave Nero's apartment, walk through the stacks. The stacks is burning. It's a different kind of burning, not really fire, but you have to be in there to see everything burn around the neon, the roadside, the cooked meat, the flesh, the drugs, the people. As always, the stacks is always on fire. Yin and Euro make their way to the heart of Icarus One and further down into Little Wing. They reach Cafe Solace before Trauma does find a table for themselves. Cafe Solace, it's a little bit upscale. Um, it's cafe by name, but there's food, drink, coffee as well, anything that you would wish to partake in after some time you guys see trauma walk to the door he sees you guys sitting by a table makes his way there and takes a seat opposite to you guys and as soon as trauma walks in Hiroshima immediately he stands up and just without taking his eyes off him just walks straight up to trauma and puts his hand out uh, to shake his hand. And trauma will look him up and down. He's, do I know you? Yeah, well, 
You don't know me, but... And I probably looked a little worse the last time you saw me. But uh, it's my understanding that I'm only standing here in front of you now because of you. Oh. Yeah, I remember. Shake your hand. Put, put a cigarette in his mouth first and then shake your hand. You know, no problem. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you didn't think it was a problem. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to say thank you. I just wanted to say thank you very much. I, I, I feel like I owe you my life. Don't worry about it. You're already paid for. <laughs> already paid for. That's 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 good to know. Um, well, in any case, I just I just wanted to look you in the eye and shake your hand and say thank you. Yeah. Um, no problem. And Nirishima turns around and looks at you, and you know, she's she's waiting for us. Of course she is. Start walking over and pull up the chair. And Yin will have the mask on. I'm taking it off and look over to Trauma. I'm glad you came. I was worried. Don't do. Well. Good news. We're not asking you to do a job for more pay up front this time. In addition, we would like you to put you on retainer, and my brother would like to employ you due to your skills. Can you afford me? Well. And she'll kind of lean back in her chair a little bit. I'm very sure he can afford you. He is offering upfront before any other payments. Ten thousand credits. It's a lot of credits. Yes. In addition, the technology that we found, the backup that you did not assist in reclaiming. We've acquired it through some people I know. I have completed said technology, so it is a functional version of the original one that was taken by the Knuckle Dragger Gang. Now we are looking to sell said technology and we would like you, as long as you accept to be on retainer, we would like to offer you 7.5% of the sales. <clears throat> okay. Let's talk about the expectations, then. <sighs> he smiles with her eyes a little bit, looking down towards the table, and tapping it with her nails before looking back up to trauma. It'll be very similar as before with our first mission together. Just hopefully you won't be saving my life at the beginning every time. <laughs> it will be... You as backup. Machine has already also agreed to work with us. So most likely the two of you will be paired. It is, as far as I know, mostly a bodyguard situation. In case things get hairy, we need both your weaponry and your medical abilities. To assist. And when do I start? Immediately. And when do I start getting paid? Well, 
the 10,000 is immediate. It will be transferred into your account once you agree. And regarding when you will continuously get paid, we are working on making copies of the technology and we will be selling as much as we can whenever we get income from set sales you will be paid your allotment you have a contract for me that's a good question do i have a contract so <clears throat> given that trauma is um is a question to us working with you guys when you pull out your compad and send a few quick messages to your brother trauma in a short period of time you get a message on your compad and then if you see there is a contract written up from yang with all the details that you just discussed it specifies the 10k credits up front to your bank account and 7.5% of profits made from the sale of the program I will also give you a warning most this job does not just involve protection when we go and sell this information it will also be working for my brother in regards to him acquiring our father's company and there will be profits in that as well so the profits that you will get are not just singularly from the sales of the information but also once we gain control of the company as an addition fair enough trauma report that is combat out and you know through the information the contract making sure everything sound uh, he'll type up a quick letter of resignation template to send over to the current medical facility he's working for. Accept the contract and forward the accepted contract to Yang. Yin, you get a copy from Yang shortly. You can see that trauma is accepted. the contract and is now working for your group um trauma for your and you get one more message and you see that 10000 credits have been deposited to one of your accounts yeah, it gets divided to all the bills and separate auto pay functions whatever is left is left okay I'm glad you accepted trauma. Welcome to the team. <laughs> yeah, so what are we doing tonight? <sighs> tonight we are heading off to a club called The Untitled to inquire with potential buyers. now on the sea of plans no promise it gets up and pushes his seat in and when trauma stands up and pushes his seat in nero kind of gives a a curt nod nod of his head forward as in, as in a, a nonverbal okay then and uh, he stands up and pushes away from the table as well Slide slightly to the side and 
step out of the chair, pushing it in, she exits. Well, I don't know if you have arrived, drama, eight months. We're walking. I don't think it's that far. Yeah. yeah. Door. Yes, you do. A beater, you have a beater. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you guys make your way out um, out of the cafe Solis, and you guys see that on on the road there is um, trauma scar park. You guys get in and make your way towards the untitled. Um, Nero, how are you feeling about the fact that we're heading back to the Untitled? Yeah, as we get closer and closer to the Untitled, um, Nero just becomes more and more remote, remorse, and just uh, kind of sinks into himself. He 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 has like a knot in the pit of his stomach as he's as he's walking and he's looking down at the ground. And he's just thinking back on that mission uh, that him and Val went on. My like, God, I don't want to come back to this place. I don't want to have to talk to him. I don't want to have to talk to him. I don't want to have to talk to him. He's just kind of, kind of going over everything in his head that happened in the you know the previous mission um, that in, that involved the un, the untitled and. Uh, Quasi Domo, and he's just playing it all over in his head. It's all he can think about. It's it's just uh, this this knot and this obsession. His heart rate is just a little faster, and he's shaking his head, and he's just visibly just distressed. Eventually, you guys get to the street. Around the corner, the untitled is, is situated. You guys get out of the car. Nero, you remember that titled is a special place. It's actually built inside of a Faraday cage. No signals in, no signals out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> How do you guys approach the Untitled at this point? What is your objective? Well, Nero just goes ahead and he turns off, turns off his coat. Uh, he has his, you know, VPN network and he has his little bubble and he has his, his own form of protection all built in, but he knows none of it's gonna work in there. So he turns his, his comms off, he turns his data pad off and he looks at the others and and says, you, you might as well turn everything off. It's not going to work in there. Mm. No. And she'll pull out her home pad and start turning it off. Why is that? I don't know if you know what a Faraday cage is, but it's basically a setup to where no signal gets in or out. Mm. That includes any signals from any of your electronic devices. Anything connected to the outside world. It's its own little bubble in there. Mm. You're going to be a little fish in a little fish bowl. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And you said yeah, you've I'm been here before? I'm glad you're looking forward to it. <laughs> you've been here before, yes? I have been here before. Oh, good. Well, would you like to lead the way then? And Nero just kind of lets out a sigh and rolls his eyes just a little bit, shakes his head. Sure. And just walks right up to it. All right. So you guys start walking up towards the untitled. Um, it just maybe it opens over. Right. 
you guys approach the untitled <clears throat> there's nobody at the at the door trying to stop you from entering in um as you guys enter um you notice that um it's a it's a it's not a dive bar per se but it's it's like kind of uh, there are like lots of places where there's a deep shadow you can see people sitting at, at different tables many of them um you know completely covered in shadow there is a, a bartender up front and a bar with some folks drinking and and watching the tv um most folks keep to themselves there is um like muted conversation taking place um interestingly you see no one has any sort of electronics out and about no bees using gadgets compads nothing and the um scans the room making note of people in the corner in the shadows and just the severe lack of technology that's been produced out and she looks over to the bar remembering what Samir said about game trauma you know keep eyes out see if anybody is watching us you know if there's anyone you may know who would be a good connection yeah and as she says good connection nero uh, glances over at the the booth that him and val were sitting in you know not not even 6 months back and he's looking at it and just kind of remembering that night yeah. you glance over um are you like particularly looking in that direction or just looking about nero oh yeah i'm 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 l- basically looking right at that same booth it just brings back memories that mm-hmm. meeting so i i look in in that specific direction yeah you look in that specific direction the people who are sitting there based on you know what facial features you can make out um they don't look familiar yeah my I, i wasn't expecting to see anyone that i knew or recognized and just just uh recalling memories from my last visit here okay um trauma what are you doing no just keep a look out just kind of nod when she asks me to take a look around just making sure to see if we're being eyed up in any particularly threatening fashion or if we're just drawing the same money and just any newcomer to a bar would okay uh give me a wisdom plus notice are you guys kind of going into the bar standing near the door yeah uh, you and we'll start making our way towards the bar okay okay Um from I'm sending you some messages. Um go ahead Yin, what would you like to do at the bar? So Yin walks up to the bar kind of looking around, maybe some of the people sitting there and she kind of takes a seat if possible, kind of away from other people. And she'll lean over the bar and kind of put a hand on the side of her face and just looking towards the bartender. waiting for him to come over. The bartender is kind of taking care of a couple of other patrons. She gets done with them and uh, he makes her way. Oh yes. How may I help you? Hi. I was wondering if oh, well, I just really need the water. I heard of this place from a friend named Zamir. Ah, Zamir. Mm. Yes, I know Zamir. We go way back. Well, if you're Zamir's friend, how can I help you? And he kind of motions you over towards the side of the bar where there's less like, there's fewer people. Yeah. And kind of get some privacy while you're talking. You know, make your way over. I presume you are Gabe. 
Yes, I am Gabe. Nice to meet you. My name is Ian. Just gonna hold out a ah. hand. Gabe kind of shake, uh, hold, puts his hand out, shakes it. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ian. Mm. Any friend of Zamir's is welcome I'm, in the Untitled. I'm glad. I heard that uh, you might have some information on a few buyers regarding. Well, I've come into possession of a little bit of technology I am looking to sell. I see. Technology, you say? Mm -hmm. Does, does Miroshima hear any of this? I mean, is he close enough? Is this like off to the side? Is this? Can I can I make a, a kind of listen test or? Mm, sure. Um, so as you see, Yin kind of go over to the the side. Nero, give me a. Um, I would say just notice plus wisdom. And uh, Yin, are you trying to have a quiet conversation? Mm. <sighs> kind of. Um, so Yin is being a li like not too loud, but she's kind of a loud. Like if people were to kind of pay attention, she is more of allowing them to listen in. I see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Nero. You do not know the exact words Yin is saying, but you do hear a couple of words that pique your interest with respect to the words cell and technology and buyers. Yeah, just in context, just putting those, hearing those words um, before she goes any further, uh, Nero walks over to her and leans in kind of between her and this bartender and he looks at the bartender I'll take a whiskey can you get on that right away please and he pushes himself even further between them and kind of leans across the bar his left arm you know on the bar between Gabe and Yin and he looks at her what are you telling him Gabe at the bar is he kind of gives you both like a, a quizzical but not sure look and he says all right I'll get you your whiskey uh, be right back and then he kind of goes away um, you can see him like he's taking some glasses out and pouring the whiskey and Yen will go ahead of, I'll tilt her head to the side and look a bit plainly at Nero, I have a very trustworthy contact, and they have informed me that this bartender is one to speak with in regards to finding people to sell the tech to. He is a friend of my contact. Nero, um, still leaning against the bar, looks at Yin and looks back at Trauma and whispers to Yin what Trauma whispered to him. We're being watched. You should talk a whole lot less right now. Well... Why don't you handle it, Nero, since you are much more knowledgeable in this than I? Handle it? Excuse me? I'm not someone who handles things like this. You seem the more murderous type than me. Oh, do you mean the ones who are watching us? I meant the explanation of what we have in terms of people watching us. I can handle that. Shh. 
Sure. I'll talk to your contact. You talk to Trauma about what he saw. All right. I will, once the bartender comes back, I will make quick introductions. Go talk to Trauma. Yes. Very good. Hmm. You guys... You can see that Gabe is actually finished pouring the whiskey, but he's not coming towards you. Once your conversation ends and kind of you, you guys create a distance between yourself, coming to terms with whatever you discussed, Gabe notices that and he comes comes towards you. Ah, uh, here you are. This is your whiskey. That'll be 10 credits. Yeah, and uh, he kind of... Uh pings his credits into you know, remotely you know he uses whatever whatever local local system that they have in here and uh puts the credits in there and then he kind of just leans on the on the bar takes a shot of whiskey and sets it down on the on the on the bar and looks at him and says so your name is gabe yes that is my name, and who might you be? You, sir, are intruding on a conversation I'm having with this lady. Is Yin still there? Did oh, she no. walk she's off there. to go talk to Trauma? Oh, she's here. Uh, I'm, I'm intruding on a conversation. You're, you're 100% correct in that, sir. Um, Nero. But she's... Nero off to have another conversation with another person right now, so how about you talk with me? And Yin's gonna kind of look very apologetically at Gabe. I am so sorry about my associates. He spends most of his time indoors and not really interacting with people that well, but I will say that he can explain what we have much better than I can. Ed, uh, Nero, play nice, please. Well, well, I'm a fucking sweetheart. <laughs> you don't have to worry about me. I'm trying to look to Gabe um, for the okay, see if he's uncomfortable. Kind of trying to gauge him. Gabe kind of shakes his head, pinches the bridge of his nose. Fucking coat cowboys. <sighs> No. Yes, yes. Your lot do come in here, and I do know it drives you insane with the parody cage, but that's now how I like to keep it. And he's kind of like this, kind of like this uh, sly smile on his face. He knows, in some ways, it is painful for code cowboys like Neuro to go in completely dark like this. He's like, yes. Thank you, Miss Ian, for the introductions. I can carry the conversation with this gentleman here. Thank you. And Ian will give you know, a light pat on the shoulder before making her way back over to Chum. So, Gabe and looks at Nero. Lady said something about software technology that you would like to sell yeah well I don't know about selling anything not just yet you're getting a little ahead of yourself here I don't know what you want the software for anyways can't use it in this place but I guess we have to open discussions somewhere Ah, I guess I will have to be literal with you. You are one of those types. Well, let me explain to you as plainly as I can. I do not use the software, but as you can see in a place like this, the clientele I attract are interested in software with capabilities. 
as long as your software has capabilities that my clients are interested in, I can make introductions and help you sell it. Now, if this sounds too complex for you, you know the way out. Does that open discussions for you, Mr. Niroshima? And Nero takes a uh, takes the whiskey and just downs the whole thing. Puts the glass onto the onto the bar and looks at this Gabe guy and kind of with a look of disgust and says I want a meeting with Quasi Domo Quasi Domo you want a meeting with Quasi Domo is Quasi Domo expecting you Mr. Niroshima no but he'll want to hear about what we're selling All right, I will make a phone call. This is going to be interesting because if you don't have what Quasidomo is looking for, this is going to be a very interesting evening for me. The next round's on the house, Mr. Nero. And uh, with that, he walks away. You can see he's pouring another shot of whiskey for you and he's typing something in, into his compad. He comes by, keeps the, the shot of whiskey. I've reached out. I've not heard back. But Quasi Domo generally comes in, so you shouldn't be too long. Well, then I'll sip my whiskey. And Nero grabs the whiskey off the bar, takes a sip out of it, gives him a nod, and turns his back on him and just kind of leans on the bar looking out at the rest of the crowd all right he kind of just shakes his head he can he kind of barely hear him muttering under his bed something about coat tall boys and kind of walks away helping other patrons the scene switches over to trauma and yin who are kind of milling about milling about near the entrance and at this point, they've been kind of whispering to each other about what's okay. been going on. Trauma has handed her the data slab. And she takes a look at it. So, this is on. That's. She'll be speaking in a fairly low tone to Trauma. That was on the heads. Record tracker? Yeah, I thought it might have credit to something on it, so I took it. I was disappointed, of course. And what did you find? There is some information on there. Hmm. Might have to do with who was trying to engage them to begin with. Nothing I really cared about, so I didn't look too deeply into it. I figure it might be useful to you now. Especially that we're working together anyway. Yeah, and smiles with her eyes of drama. Thank you. Now her expression becomes a bit more serious as she and leans more towards drama. What exactly did you say about us being watched? That's all there is to it. Bye. Being watched by some people over there, in the corner. Don't look. Mm. Street types, thugs. Probably gonna try to start something. <laughs> oh, I definitely welcome them too. Ian, you kind of see the direction which trauma is pointing. Um, and you see that there is a... Yeah, come on. But, hold on. Um... Uh... There's this 
person in the shadows looking at you guys and not at, not exactly at you guys but towards the door and kind of keeping an eye about the place hmm. and me and looks the trauma maybe instead of standing at the door looking fairly obvious maybe we should find somewhere else in the bar to camp out sure go over to a bar stool it's nearby and pull himself up to it you know, I'm gonna roll her eyes as she follows trauma thinking oh man this is Probably his first mission, being a bodyguard. Great. And <laughs> she pulls up a seat beside him, leans back on the bar, just kind of gazes lazily over the crowd, taking in who's here. Not obviously staring at anyone, but it's kind of regarding. This person that you guys know, know, observed. He kind of walks about and then he kind of again disappears into the shadows. Um, you guys are waiting. Yin, the data slab the, and compad that Trauma gave you, the compad does not have any encryption or anything on it. It just has a bunch of numbers. Um, the data slab is definitely uh, encrypted. Mm. Um, you would need somebody like Neuro Skills to unlock it yeah. so she probably needs to run to the numbers maybe see if Nero has some sort of 411 kind of program for these numbers see if she can find out who they are before it's cold calling sure um unless there's names attached to them yes yeah, so I'm thinking of something uh let's see Give me a notice plus int. Um, yeah, so you're basically scrolling through the compad and you see numbers. The data, the data pad that has a, like a six, six character entry code on it mm. um yeah so yeah you definitely need yeah a neuro's help go on the data pad that's all right is there only numbers on the compad or is there like mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. there's nothing else no there's nothing else on the compad mm -hmm. just just numbers okay yeah she'll put them away in her coat continue Looking at it, everyone, and she looks over at Trauma. You need a drink? It's on me. Don't drink. Hmm. Good to know. Neither do I. Yeah, you got different poisons. <laughs> yes, I'll need to poison my body with one thing at a time. Whatever you want to do. Mm. I see it the same way. And she's regarding the cigarette in his mouth. Yeah. That's only if you're worried about the long term. And you're not worried about the long term. Only as long as they need to be. Oh. Oh. You are. Very talkative trauma. It's one of my defining character traits. Mm. Why did you take this job exactly? The money? For the money, <laughs> obviously. No other motivations? None that concern you. Mm. Well. I would like to get to know you, Trauma, because right now you're almost as interesting as toast. But sometimes I, I like toast. Just... 
I think you should just keep regarding me as toast then. <laughs> and then we'll kind of laugh at that. All the right. <laughs> toast the boy. Mm. So as trauma and Yin are um, exchanging pleasantries, um, a gentleman walks to the door. Trauma and Yin, you observe this person is is balding, has glasses on. He signals to Gabe. Gabe talks to him for a bit. And you can see that Gabe points this person towards where uh, uh, Nero is standing with the back towards the bar where Nero is looking at the rest of the, the untitled but his back is towards the bar. Gabe and this person exchange some small talk and you see this person start making his way towards Nero. Um, Mr. Nero Shima. Six months is a long time. As soon as he hears his voice, Nero turns around and gets a big grin on his face and holds his arms stretched out wide. Mr. Domo, I, uh, I'm back. I just, uh, wanted to see how you're doing see how I am doing that is interesting Mr. Nero interesting since the last time we spoke I gave you a very specific task and I believe the task is not complete. Yeah, you're right about that. I'm... I'm so sorry about that. That was, um... That was a mistake on our part. Um... But I'm here to make it up to you. You are here to make it up to me. You're here to make it up to me for incompleting a task that was vital to me and my organization. How exactly are you going to make it up to me, Mr. Nero? Listen, I know I let you down. I apologize for that. That whole mission went sideways and there was nothing we could do about it. We're thankful that we got out of there with our lives. But I'm here to make it up to you. Uh, I don't, I'm not even asking for a whole lot in return. It is unfortunate that my contacts could not get me the Olaf brothers because there is rumors that they succeeded while you and your friend failed. How does that make you feel, Nero, when he says the Olaf brothers? hear about Doc, you there? Have some technology that I think you might be interested in. Hmm. Wait, so what do I, I missed the part where you said what 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 do you feel when he says about the Olaf? You cut out there. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, Nero. Nero responded by saying, um, "Well, it's it's funny that you mention the Olaf brothers because I have some, I I have some uh, strong opinions about them myself, and I'm looking for them. And I think you might be able to help me. I have some technology you might be interested in." in exchange, of course, for the appropriate amount of credits, but also information on where I could find the Olaf brothers. Hmm. I see. (sighs) 
what does your software do mr nero and please you are already on thin ice short rope whatever phrasing you want to use do not i repeat do not dick me around right now we are not on pleasant terms well let's prepare to get on pleasant terms mr domo i've come into contact with some software and this software you are not going to believe and nero kind of leans back again and uh, looks around for his whiskey grabs it off the off the bar takes another sip holds the whiskey out and uses it while he's talking for emphasis I've got a code cracker a code cracker like you would not believe Nero give me a charisma plus are you saying this uh low voice normal voice did you raise your voice to make an emphasis point well i i basically said it in a low voice because i don't want too many people hearing this okay but i'm but i'm emphasizing i'm raising an eyebrow and i'm looking him right in the eye and telling him i have a code cracker like you would not believe okay uh give me a charisma plus sneak all right well a code cracker you say and he kind of looks at you hmm mr nero you did not leave a great impression the last time we met and your work let's say i like working with someone who can deliver what they promise and you have not so you can understand when i'm reluctant to believe someone like you has a software like that do not get me wrong software like that does not fall into the lap of people like you and it kind of gives you that smug look on a smile yeah well it might not fall into the lap of people like me but here we are and i'm telling you i've got it and it works hmm takes a moment to think all right from his uh, coat pocket he pulls out what looks like a pad and he writes down something on it here you go mr neuro behind this and it's what when you look at it you can clearly see it's like an ip address you know um behind this is a server the server is well protected on it there are some files get me those files and i believe you have the software that you say you have these are the only files on the server shouldn't be very difficult if you say what you have works Nero takes his compad out and he kind of uh gets it near 
quasi domos compad almost touching it so that the information transfers over to his um kind of you know a a, a, a close by airdrop mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. and he he downloads the information onto his compad and says all right as soon as i get that i'll be back here with the information i'll prove to you that what we have is real I think things for a moment. Looks at you. Hmm. Let us do this. If you have what you say you have, then let us not meet here. Hack that server, get me those files. And then he kind of pulls out his compad again and airdrops an address. I can meet you here. The place is secure, and we can talk business. And Nirishima just nods his head, gives it like a curt nod, stands up, or, or actually pushes away from the bar, and turns around, looks at Yin and Trauma, nods at them, uh, and just continues to walk out the door. Trauma and Ian, what do you guys do? Hmm. Ian is gonna look to Trauma. <sighs> Could you follow him out? I'm going to quickly speak to the bartender for a moment. Yeah. Gets up and puts his cigarette out in one of the ashtrays and starts to walk out. Okay. Trauma and Nero, you guys walk out. Ian, you get to the bar. You kind of signal to Gabe. Gabe is helping some patrons. He says, a and comes over. Quasidomo, who was talking to Nero, he kind of makes his way to a table, sits down, and seems to be deep in thought. Mm. Ian will look to. Gabe, I don't apologetically. I apologize for my associates. Uh, was those one of the contacts you had? And she refers to. Oh, say that uh, again. Who are you pointing she's, to? She's uh, saying, "Who is that one?" And she kind of gestures over to Quasi Domo, one of the contacts that you were referring to before. For seller or buyer, sorry. Well, I had somebody else in mind. He is someone Mr. Nero brought up. Hmm. Well, I was not expecting that. If I may ask, and my apologies if my associate says damaged this relation to put all away. I do wish to repair it. I would like to know maybe some of the names of the contacts that you have or just maybe general descriptions. It doesn't have to be real names. Just so I may maybe sit down and speak with them if they come here often. Well, do not worry, Miss Yen. Zamir has washed for you, so I understand. I have worked with my fair share of code cowboys, and they are difficult people. Mm. I'm glad you understand. To work with. <laughs> it's cyberspace, Miss Yen. It removes the human contact mm. it's something about have you been into cyberspace i have not well code cowboys they spend a lot of their time in cyberspace and they can achieve things in cyberspace that 
biological body in real space cannot. Many of them find this existence very limiting. Makes them crabby, angry, edgy. <laughs> I run out of words to describe. But they can be useful when the occasion calls for it. No, I know, just not the discussions or negotiations. <laughs> so, if you're still interested in meeting my contact, I can point you to them. Mm. No hard feelings if you're not. Samir just told me to make some introductions. Mm. She kind of looks back to the door, the other two. Well, unfortunately, it looks like my compatriots have decided to step out for a moment. I will be back, Gabe, but I wish to not keep them waiting. Well, you know where to find me. I'm generally always running this place, so if you need more contact, I can help you get in touch. Thank you very much. I will be back fair, probably within the week. All right, I shall be here. And Dian takes her leave, exiting the door. She's as she turns from Gabe, kind of approaching the door. She's got a deep scowl on her face this evening. Definitely did not turn out the way she originally planned, but next time she'll plan for the Neuroshima equation. Yin, you step out and you see Trauma is by his car. You can clearly make out by Trauma's body language that he is very alert and looking around. You do not see Neuro anywhere. Mm. Yin quickly approaches Trauma. Where's the neural? No idea. You just started walking off. What direction? I'll point to it. We got another problem. What? Four thugs. Shadows. Are they moving towards Hiroshima or are they moving towards here? Just watching right now. Don't know. <sighs> we need Hiroshima. Alright, let's go then. Okay, and Ian turns around. She doesn't look in the direction. I don't know if Trauma pointed it out, but she goes in the direction. Yeah, so you'd see that. Um, one minute. So, yeah, you would have seen Nero kind of. Trauma would have seen Nero walk in that direction away from this place. Um, you know that. Little Wing is a maze of tunnels and not tunnels but alleyways and side streets and um, following him through this place is not going to be worth your while. Yeah, and you know, kind of huff and take a deep breath from my breather before pulling out a compad, turning it back on, and quickly dialing Nero. Are you guys going to be waiting in this alley? Or are you going to back out the streets of Icarus 1? Mm. Yin is actually going to give Trauma the coordinates to Nero's house. Alright, so you guys head out of the... Um, I just say just head out of this just like to wait in the area a little bit but she's gonna give him the coordinates just in case she can't get a hold of Nero okay 
so you guys get in the car trauma starts it and drives trauma as you're driving away in your rear view mirror you see like two people step out of the shadows um and they're definitely eyeballing your car at this point um eventually you kind of leave this area on the streets of Icarus 1 Go ahead, Yin. Mm. Yin will quickly scroll down to Nirashima's name and her compad. Press it, give him a ring. She's got her legs crossed in the front seat of Trauma's car, and ner- kind of nervously tapping her leg with with her middle finger over and over. Okay. Yin, the compad. You can hear the phone ring. It rings. It rings. No one answers. God damn it! I swear to God, if he's going to jeopardize this, there's going to be no way that you're bringing him back, Trauma. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Might as well go to his home. Trauma. When she gives you the coordinates, you see that it's the stacks. Of course, he lives in a shithole. Spends most of his time in cyberspace. Doesn't need a nice place to look around to. Gotta come out sometime. Mm. Trauma. You see that this area of stacks, you kind of have a clue. It's not good. Yeah, and trauma will at like a red light or something. Trauma will look left and right, and then he'll pull his uh, shotgun from the back seat and put it in his lap, and continue to drive when the light turns green. What time is it uh, right now? Um, the time is based on all the traveling, the discussions, the waiting. It is getting close to midnight. Okay. Yin, you would also know that if this is where you guys are going, it is not. You saw how bad the place yeah. is. Yeah. Trauma is gonna actually hop on his. Head. Start dialing a number. The compad rings. Brother, didn't expect you to call me. Didn't expect they have to call. You in some kind of trouble? Right, yeah, but your ex-girlfriend's about to get me in some. <laughs> you need some backup. Yeah, I'll send you coordinates. <sighs> He looks at it. Fuck. Yep. You're going in hot. We'll find out when we get there. All right, I'll be ready. Later. Later. Hang it up and put it back in his pocket. Oh. Do you mind if we quickly swing by my place? I think it's on the way. You need to grab something if you're going in the hut. Sure. We should be able to get there before Nero anyway. He knows this place better than we do, so we'll see. True, but he better. I'm hoping he's not there. I don't want to have to kill him. You guys swing over to Yin's place. Trauma, you now know where 
Yin spends most of her time. You make a mental note of the place. Yin, you grab your things. You guys head out. Eventually, you find yourselves in the stacks. Yin, you look around you, and you were unsure that the place could get worse. But then Nero's words kind of ring in the back of your head, and it's kind of getting there close to magic hour. Then the stacks just becomes a beast of its own. And with that, we bring the session to a close. <laughs> you mother sucker! I can't believe.